Hey there, everybody. Do you love to travel and learn about new places? Great, then you are in the right place. Join Jasmine the cat and Gracie the tortoise as they have fun traveling the beautiful United States and learning lots of cool new facts. Hey there, friends. It's Jasmine, the jazzy gray cat, here with my BFF Gracie, the super smart tortoise. Say hi, Gracie. Greetings, my good friends. I'm so glad you're exploring North Dakota, our 39th state with us. Guess what, Gracie? I know that the capital is Bismarck and the biggest city is Fargo. North Dakota is our 19th biggest state, but it ranks 47th for population. Do you want to know how big that is? I sure do. Well, you could put 46 states the size of Rhode Island inside of it. North Dakota is also known for its beautiful landscape and Native American culture. Hmm, so that means that North Dakota is a big, beautiful state, but not a lot of people live here. That's right. The word Dakota is from the Native American Sioux that means friend. Many different tribes of Native Americans lived here in the past, and today there are over 30,000 Native peoples from different tribes that still enjoy living here. North Dakota was first known as the Dakota Territory. In 1889, the land was split into two sections, North and South Dakota, with North Dakota becoming a state. North Dakota has such a pretty nickname, the Peace Garden State, and is named after the International Peace Garden, which is located between Canada and North Dakota. The garden is there to remind us of a promise made in 1932 between the United States and Canada to always be friends. I can't wait till we go and see it. North Dakota is a Midwestern state, which is part of the Great Plains. The Rocky Mountains are also part of the state, as well as the Badlands, which is a dry, stony valley that was created by wind and water. It was called the Badlands by the pioneers going west. After traveling easily through the grassy plains, this rocky terrain was more difficult. Jazzy, are you ready for a fun fact? Always! North Dakota was once covered with water and has fossils of ancient sea creatures, including swimming reptiles, clams, and other fish. That's pretty interesting. And today, North Dakota has lots of prairie animals like bison, bighorn sheep, and moose. Some really interesting reptiles that live here are the soft-shell turtle with its skin-colored shell and a smooth green snake that looks like it's smiling. Now come on over to the map and help me find North Dakota. I'm right here. North Dakota is up here at the top of our country, with Canada on the north, Minnesota on the east, South Dakota on the south, and Montana on the west. Are you ready to go? I sure am. My princess bed is fluffed and waiting. Oh, Gracie! Look out the window at all the pretty sunflowers growing in that field. So happy and sunny. Yes, they are. North Dakota grows more sunflowers than any other state. I just love these happy flowers. Now, what other fun facts do you know about North Dakota? Well, let's see. I know. How about this one? Some people think the word North in the name North Dakota makes it sound like the weather is too cold here. They would just like it called Dakota. Gracie, that is too funny. Nobody thinks North Carolina is too cold. But it does snow a lot here. In 2007, North Dakota broke the Guinness World Record for the most snow angels made at one time. They made almost 9,000 gorgeous angels in the snow. Now that's a fun snowy fact. My last fact is about North Dakota becoming a state. It became a state the same day as South Dakota. Both states wanted to be first. President Benjamin Harrison didn't want to play favorites, so he signed the papers without looking at them. But because North Dakota comes before South Dakota in the alphabet, it's listed first. I guess that was the only fair way to do it. Look, Jasmine, here we are at the International Peace Garden. This beautiful park is at the border of Manitoba, Canada, and North Dakota. I can see the flags of Canada and the U.S. Gracie, it is so fragrant here. The flowers and the fountains. Oh, Ooh, look at that clock. It's 18 feet wide and made out of flowers. And it really tells the time. Over 2,000 flowers were used to make it, and it looks just like one in Bern, Switzerland. Listen, do you hear chimes? Yes, I do. 
Here in the chapel, it is so peaceful and inspiring to read all the quotes about peace. I like this one from Nelson Mandela. It is in your hands to create a better world for all who live in it. You're right. That is a great quote. And if we all work together, the world would be a nicer place for everyone. Look over there, a wedding. What a perfect place for a wedding. That bride looks stunning and the flower girls are adorable. They all look so happy. I'm so glad we stopped here. It was uplifting to see how the United States and Canada celebrate their friendship. But our next stop has me in a geographic Twitter. Really? You? Okay, Gracie. Why don't you tell me why? Excited to. Here in Rugby, North Dakota, we are at the geographic center of the continent of North America. The what? The geographic center, or the middle of our continent, North America. Look at that stone pillar monument with the flags of the three biggest countries, United States, Canada, and Mexico around it. It is so exciting. If you say so, Gracie. But next, I want to go to Jamestown to see the world's biggest buffalo statue. There he is. His name is Dakota Thunder, and he is 26 feet tall. Dakota Thunder certainly is a wonder. And he is at the entrance to Frontier Village, which is a street of old buildings that show us how prairie pioneers lived. Shall we visit the real bison that live here and explore the National Buffalo Museum, too? Remember, we use the words bison and buffalo to mean the same animal. Of course I do. Look, Gracie, I see White Cloud. White Cloud and her son, Dakota Miracle, were white bison that were once part of the herd. She died in 2016 and now is on display at the museum. White buffalo are very rare. Only one in 10 million bison is born white. They are sacred to the Native Americans, who see them as a sign of peace. Now that we are bison experts, let's move on to Theodore or Teddy Roosevelt National Park. Teddy Roosevelt was our 26th president. He was not born here in North Dakota, but he just loved this beautiful state. The Teddy Roosevelt National Park is the only national park named after a president. He earned this honor because he so loved the natural beauty of America that he started the National Forest Service, created five national parks, and protected millions of acres so that we can always enjoy the natural wonder of our land. Wow, it is beautiful here. Did you know that Teddy Roosevelt first traveled here to hunt bison? But after he came here, he made laws to protect them. That was so kind of him. I'm sure the animals were very happy about that, too. The park is divided into three sections. One section is where Teddy Roosevelt had his ranch, called Elkhorn Ranch. The other section has the Badlands, that area of rocky land. The last section has grasslands and lots of animals like bison, elk, wild horses, and even prairie dog towns. I am also interested to see how prairie dogs live. Groups of about 26 prairie dogs live together in a family, but these families will also live together with hundreds of other prairie dog families in networks of tunnels called dog towns. Prairie dogs really like to be with their family. They groom each other, share food, and even nuzzle noses to say hello. So sweet. Here it is, Prairie Dog Trail. Let's go. The black-tailed prairie dogs are the ones that live here. Look at all those holes, and I see prairie dogs sitting up, looking around. Over here, hi! That one waved back. I'm sure he did. Prairie dogs have very sharp claws and live in the tunnels they dig underground. Unfortunately, many other animals think prairie dogs are delicious, and prairie dogs are always on the alert to stay safe. I remember that they make a sound like a bark to warn about danger. They leave their tunnels to get grass to eat and love to tumble and play outside. Oh, look, some are playing over there. I am so glad we came. As we head back, check out the pronghorn sheep and the white-tailed deer. Did you know that there are about seven different kinds of snakes here? But only one, the prairie rattlesnake, is poisonous. But don't worry, it likes to be left alone and will only attack if it is bothered first. Well then, I for one will keep a close lookout. I don't want to get on the bad side of the prairie rattlesnake. Oh, this hike has tired me out. What is next? 
How about a ride down the Enchanted Highway near the town of Region in southwest North Dakota? Enchanted? Do you mean with magic? No, Jasmine, not magic. Just enchanting sculptures made from scrap metal. It was created by Gary Graff. He was inspired by animals that live here and famous people. Over there, I see the first one. It looks like flying geese. Oh, and our next one is deer jumping over a fence. Oh, my. I see one large grasshopper. Oh, I like how he made metal ruffles of water for the fisherman's dream art. Oh, my. Those pheasants are huge birds. I do like this one of the stagecoach and horses, which is a tribute to Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, look. The last one is a funny tin family of a farmer and his wife. Oh, Gracie, this was one of my favorite drives of our trip. And now it's time for home. Let's do some snake jokes for the prairie rattlesnake. You can go first. Thanks, Jazzy. What snakes are found on cars? Um, that's a tough one. Steering snakes? Interesting try, Jazzy. But the answer is windshield vipers. Oh, I get it. Vipers are a kind of snake. Windshield vipers. My turn. This one is fun. What do you get when you cross a snake and a dessert? And my guess is a python. Great guess, Gracie. You got it. Now, my favorite place was seeing the prairie dog town in Theodore Roosevelt National Park. They are just so adorable. Now, how about you, Gracie? I really enjoyed the International Peace Garden. Now, how about you, friends? What was your favorite spot? Don't forget to tell someone you love all about it. That's right. Thanks for exploring with us. Come back next week for, you guessed it, South Dakota. Bye now. Say goodbye, Gracie. Goodbye, my dear friends. See you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining Jasmine and Gracie on their adventure today. Come back next week for the next one. Hello, everybody. It's Gwen here. If you want to know more about the places we visited, just go to our website, jasmineandgracie.podbean.com, and go to the sources page, and you can find out all about the great places that we visited. See you next week. Bye-bye.